Good day everybody, my name is Andre Willefeer. Uh, I'm a chaplain with the Dogs of War Veterans Association and we support one another and we support projects in our community. I'm going to talk to you today and the topic is going to be death is better than life. Now as a chaplain I suppose I better be able to support that statement. But allow me just to open in prayer. Just relax with me and we go into the Lord's presence and just say, Abba Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your precious word. Your word is yes and amen. And we can declare today, Lord, that everything that we need is found in you. You are the all-sufficient one. I pray, Lord, that you will come and anoint my lips. I will speak only that which you want me to speak by your Holy Spirit and prepare the hearts of the people that are going to receive this word. In your precious name I pray. Amen and amen. Yes, death is better than life. Where do I get this? In the Bible, Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1 and 2. A good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death better than the day of birth. Now you will recall also Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God said to them, if you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. So we're talking about a spiritual death, not a physical death. And that is why if we also go to, to my and to most people's, I believe, favorite verse in the Bible, John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world. Now I'm going to ask why. Why did God so love the world? And it says, so whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So it's all about eternal life. And in order to do that, we need to die to self. We need to die to the flesh. And we need to do that what the word of God says to us. So that is how we achieve it. That is why John the Baptist said, I must become less, that Jesus Christ must become more in me. I must become less of Andre Olivier, and I must become more like Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. So Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, let me give you a couple of scriptures, and you see if you are spiritually there already. I'm not, but I'm trying and I'm aware of it. So let me give you in a scripture, Matthew 20, verse 16. So that the last will be first and the first will be last. If I ask you, if you are standing in the queue anywhere, uh, would you be prepared to go stand at the back of the queue and let the person at the back of the queue come stand in the front of the queue? Because the word says, those who are first will be last and those who are last will be first. I'm not there, but let's, let us explore this a little bit. Luke 14 and verse 8, when you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down to eat at a place of honor, since a more distinguished person than you may have been invited by the host. Now, how many times people want to sit in the front of the church and want to be the most important person and so on? And the word says, don't do that. There could be somebody more important than you. Are we there yet or do we want the seat of prominence? John 13 and verse 5, after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. How many of us are prepared to go and wash people's feet? Would you do that? Because that is what Jesus did. Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, went and washed his disciples' feet. Let me just give you one more. Matthew 5 and verse 44. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Wow, that's a, that's a tough one. Have you ever prayed positively for your enemy? Or did you say, Lord, bless him, bless him with a brick or with a nine mow or whatever the case may be? So you can see there is definitely places in our lives where we need to start changing and renewing our minds to crucify the flesh and to start become obedient to what the word of God says. So death is better than life. If we die to flesh, our lives automatically then become better in terms of peace, in terms of harmony, in terms of reconciliation, and so on. Forgiveness and righteousness go hand in hand. In, hand. in John 20, verse 23, Jesus tells the disciples this, If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. And that is why Jesus on the cross said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. When people do something wrong to us, are we strong enough to say that and to say, Lord, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing? I'm honest with you, I'm not quite there yet, 
I'm trying to get there because the word of God says, whom he has set free is free indeed. Let us go back to uh, John 8 and verse 7 with the lady that was caught in adultery. And it says, however, when they persisted in questioning him, he straightened up and said, he, he, he who is without sin among you, let him first throw a stone at her. So can I ask, are you or me in a position where we can pick up a stone and start throwing at somebody? Because we can only do that if we are without sin. And yes, if we confess our sins, the Lord is true and faithful to forgive us. But are we there or do we try and blame other people? Or do we get to a point where we say, Lord, I am a sinner. I beat on my chest and say, Lord, I am a sinner. Show me my heart, Lord. How can I improve? Or do I go through life picking up stones and throwing stones at everybody around me? And that is the purpose of today. For you to perhaps go and do an introspection and see are there areas in your life where you can improve, where you want to improve. Because this is going to be your decision, not mine. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to you, that you know as and where you need to change. We need to love God with all our might and all our mind and all our understanding. And the word says, if we love him, we will be obedient to his word. But here's the thing. What type of love are we talking about? You see, if I go to my wife and I say to her, Estelle, do I really love you? She will say yes. If I say to her, Estelle, would I give my life to protect you? She would say yes, because she knows I love her. But let me tell you something today. Andre Ulefi's love is not enough. Because as soon as my wife does something which is outside of my terms of reverence, I get angry. I need agape love. I need unconditional love. And I confess I do not have that at this point in time. I need to get there. I want to get there. And I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to help me to get there. And this is why I'm talking to you today. Saying that death is better than life. Let us die now to the flesh. How do we do that? By renewing our mind. I want to tell you something. In hell there's no unity. But you can have unity now on earth by not throwing stones, by confessing your sins. There's no forgiveness in hell. It's too late. We have control now over what we are doing. We have control now. Now. Now is the time for you and I to sit and to say, who do we need to forgive? Who do we ask for forgiveness that we've wronged? Because the opportunity is now. And we need to start by doing that. By dying to self. By dying to self. By renewing our mind. And praying that the Holy Spirit would help us. Allow me to close. Abba Father, we, we worship and we praise you, Lord. And we know this is not a short sprint. It's a journey. It's all the way through our life, Lord. But if we have a desire to change by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, we can do that. And that is my prayer. Lord, examine my heart. Show me areas in my life where I still need to change, Lord. And help me by your grace to change. In your precious name I pray. Amen and amen. Stay safe and stay blessed until next time. Remember, Jesus loves you. Bye-bye for now.